what he says, because as John Riley said, it's not about uh, words necessarily at this stage. He did write the letter. People have heard that the sorry, uh, sorry is coming from the Vatican. And of course, meeting with victims is essential. But we keep hearing about the action that needs to be done. John laid out a few of those points on accountability for bishops, and that's really what I think people are going to want to hear from the Pope. What are the steps? What's being done? And 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 that can help. But there's been huge damage done. There's been huge damage done to the trustworthiness, the credibility of bishops. And even if there's some system in place for it, people are going to ask, who's going to investigate the bishops? Is a, is a brother bishop going to investigate a brother bishop? How is all of this going to work? Or are grand juries going to have to come in and start investigating? Adelia Gallagher, who just deplaned, and now we're watching as Pope Francis uh, steps foot off the plane and steps into Dublin, Ireland. And the question, uh, how does he, uh, does he uh, take on this controversy that is certainly in the air? Our senior Vatican analyst, John Allen, joins me also live uh, following the story in Dublin. And, John, let's talk about the context of this uh, papal visit again. The first uh, visit, quite, quite honestly, in, in decades. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the last time a pope was in Ireland was in 1979, when Pope John Paul II, now St. John Paul II, uh, visited here. And, you know, you talk to anyone in Ireland, they will tell you that they are a vastly different country today than they were 40 years ago when John Paul came here. In 1979, you know, virtually everyone in Ireland went to Sunday Mass. Uh, you know, divorce was illegal. Abortion was illegal. Uh, you had to get a doctor's note to get contraception, and the whole LGBT issue wasn't even on the radar screen. You know, today, uh, Ireland has legalized gay marriage, contraception is legal, divorce is legal. They recently voted to legalize abortion. Mass attendance rates are down. Uh, it is, in many ways, a secular nation now, analogous to other Western European nations. Now, that's not to say that the Catholic Church doesn't remain an enormously important social institution here, but certainly the climate uh, is very different. You add to that uh, the impact of probably the world's most intense clerical sexual abuse scandal, uh, and, you know, the challenges facing Pope Francis on this trip, and as Taylor <laughs> rightly said, this is a quick trip, I mean, it's 32 hours, uh, but the challenges facing Pope Francis here are really enormous, uh, and so in many ways, I think this is probably one of the highest stakes trips uh, Pope Francis has taken to date, George. Let's reset for our viewers here in the United States and around the world who are just joining us. You're seeing Pope Francis on the ground in Dublin, Ireland. He just stepped off the plane just a few minutes ago. Uh, this is a very important trip, uh, the first uh, papal visit to Ireland in decades. A and there are several things uh, that the Pope uh, will certainly uh, face a as he uh, encounters people uh, throughout Ireland. Uh, one is the, the changing attitude, as our senior Vatican analyst John Allen just explained, changing attitude toward the Catholic Church. You'll remember the most recent vote there in Ireland uh, on uh, abortion, a uh, vote that certainly uh, set the tone for uh, how uh, many in that nation feel about the Catholic Church. And now, in light of this recent scandal coming out of the U.S. state of Pennsylvania that details this report uh, of sexual abuse at the hands of priests and cover-ups, Pope Francis now faces uh, what we just referred to a moment ago, I referred to as possibly an elephant in the room. Does he address it directly? We do know that he will meet with victims.